Passage. One of the things I find most striking is the presence of Antarctica on ancient maps, because we didn't discover it until 1820. And yet it's on maps drawn in the 1500s with great detail. Antarctica is one of the weirdest places on Earth, and from the very beginning, Antarctica has pretty much been a mystery to us. Now what the f is it doing on a map drawn in the 1500s, which we know was based on older source maps when nobody knew it existed in the 1500s? To me, the obvious answer is we are dealing with the fingerprints of a lost civilization. For one, the continent is sparsely inhabited, with less than 10,000 people living there. This is despite the fact that Antarctica has a landmass of 13.66 million square kilometers. As one of the most uninhabited places in the world, Antarctica has been the subject of significant exploration, and many people have done their best to uncover some of its biggest secrets. Joe Rogan, arguably the world's most popular podcaster, has been one such person. Over the years, his podcast has played host to several scientists and explorers who have spoken about some of the secrets of this region that you might not know about. Follow us on this journey with Joe Rogan into some of the weirdest and most shocking facts about Antarctica. We'll also be looking into external sources to find out additional facts about this mysterious landmass, opening your eyes to one of the weirdest parts of our entire planet. Operation High Jump and the Missing 411 Joe Rogan has been at his podcast for well over a decade now. In that time, he and his guests have come up with quite a lot of wild theories and arguments. Because of that, it's pretty rare for you to ever see Joe shocked out of his mind. However, back in 2022, he got a pretty shocking revelation that left him stunned. On an episode of his Joe Rogan Experience podcast back in August 2022, Joe had on Sam Tripoli, a fellow podcaster and comedian. There, Sam explained the event of Operation High Jump, a military exercise that happened in Antarctica back in the 20th century, one which involved President Harry Truman, Nazis, and even aliens. To be fair, Operation High Jump did exist. Officially titled the United States Navy Antarctic Development Program, the exercise went on from 1946 to 1947, and it was led by Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd. The operation consisted of 13 warships, about 4,700 military personnel, and several aerial vehicles and machines. Official records show that Operation High Jump had a simple objective, to train military personnel in extremely cold conditions and to determine the feasibility of establishing military bases in Antarctica. President Harry Truman and the American government had been curious about Antarctica and the fact that the area was largely untapped. And they were looking to pretty much establish American sovereignty over the region. However, Sam explains to Joe that according to journals written by Admiral Byrd, the Navy commander had made contact with the Nazi unidentified flying objects, UFOs. Sam explained that the Nazis had essentially made a deal with aliens to use their superior technology in World War II. Although we're not quite sure why this was never used in the actual war, or what the aliens were still doing in Antarctica following the conflict's resolution. Anyways, according to Sam, Operation High Jump's top brass eventually went back to the president and explained to him that they had to bring the aliens on board and make a deal with them. The president obliged cutting a deal with the aliens and allowing them to conduct experiments on people, and he won't believe where those experiments were being conducted. Wow, who would have thought that our national parks and forests were so creepy? And if you think this is the end of the tale, then you've got another thing coming. The story of America's pact with the Nazi aliens ends up leading to that of the missing 411, a series of unsolved cases surrounding people who have gone missing in national parks around the country. The story of the missing 411 is quite interesting. It documents people who have suddenly disappeared on these national lands, many of whom seem to have several things in common. I think I'll just let Sam explain some of these characteristics. To be fair, some of what Sam is saying here seems like one big conspiracy theory. It also doesn't necessarily bode well when he says that Operation High Jump was sanctioned by President Dwight Eisenhower when it was, in fact, sanctioned by President Truman. Nevertheless, it does raise the question of what is really going on in Antarctica and the types of military exercises that could have gone down there. If you sweat, you die. 
One of the biggest reasons why Antarctica is so sparsely populated is, unsurprisingly, the fact that it's so cold. Of course, it's no secret that Antarctica is so cold, however, I think a lot of us tend to conveniently underestimate just how freezing this place can be. Like many secluded and scenic places, Antarctica has attracted a lot of adventurers over the years. Whether for digging, running, skiing, or hiking, the adventurers have to abide by a strict dress code if they hope to survive. Even at that, it is important to also make adjustments to your dress code time and again if you hope to survive the unforgiving weather. To give a bit of an insight into this, Joe Rogan once interviewed Colin O'Brady, one of the most popular adventurers and endurance athletes in the world. Colin made a name for himself after he completed the first solo, unsupported, human-powered crossing of Antarctica's landmass back in 2018. And on an episode of the Joe Rogan Experience, he spoke about the entire ordeal and the lengths to which he had to work just to accommodate the weather. You might think Colin was exaggerating here, but he was really not. According to the official tourism website for Antarctica, you can see a stern warning against sweating, especially in the winter. This is because sweat essentially packs your clothes full of moisture. This in turn will freeze the outer layers of your outfit and pretty much melt, causing potentially harmful consequences for when you start to warm up again. For someone like Colin who had to do a lot of lifting and moving, this can be especially challenging. I like to think of myself as someone who loves a bit of cold from time to time, but none of this looks like fun if you ask me. I mean, how do you even survive in an environment where you can barely sweat without endangering your life? If you plan on visiting Antarctica, I sure hope you have your sweat pores under control. The Antarctic Treaty By this point, we've pretty much established the fact that you can't necessarily just venture into Antarctica to visit the massive slab of ice and snow. I mean, with the cold and the threat of frostbite, the continent is definitely not necessarily where you just want to venture into willy-nilly. Here's the thing, though. Even if you did want to visit Antarctica, there's a limit to how much you would be able to do that. This is because of something called the Antarctic Treaty System. As I said earlier, the entire point of that military exercise was to consider if the United States could establish a military base in Antarctica and eventually expand its dominance to cover the entire continent. However, the objective pretty much failed. In 1959, a treaty was signed between 12 countries – Argentina, Australia, Belgium, Chile, France, Japan, New Zealand, Norway, South Africa, the United Kingdom, the United States, and the USSR. The Antarctic Treaty essentially states that the continent doesn't belong to any single country. Just as well, all countries agree to pretty much respect the rights of each other on the continent and only use it for research and a little bit of tourism. The entire point of the treaty is to ensure that the environment is protected and that no man-made activity, including and especially industrialization and war, can threaten the biodiversity of the continent. So the Antarctic Treaty only ensures that all human activity in Antarctica is properly planned and managed. From tourism and exploration to scientific research, everything needs to be done in accordance with the treaty's rules and regulations. While it doesn't prevent tourists or military personnel from being present in Antarctica, anyone looking to be present on this continent will need a permit from a treaty party. Antarctica's Underground Lakes Exploration of Antarctica as well as the Antarctic Ocean has been pretty extensive over the past few decades. In the 1970s, scientists came upon a major breakthrough that demonstrated just how much of this region has been untapped since the dawn of time. They discovered that an entirely different ecosystem was existing and thriving in the Antarctic waters. To date, an estimated 400 lakes have been found beneath the surface of the Antarctic floor. These lakes sit under three kilometers of ice, and scientists believe that the lakes were formed during the separation of Antarctica from Gondwana land, a supercontinent that broke up during the Jurassic period. And thanks to underwater pressure, the lakes have managed to continue flowing all these years, instead of just freezing up and becoming moving blocks of ice. Lake Vostok, which was discovered in the 1990s, remains the largest subglacial lake discovered in the region. Laying at 2.5 kilometers below the ice, the lake had a temperature that clocked in at minus 3 degrees. Despite being covered by ice for 20 million years, lakes like this have also been found to hold existing ecosystems of microorganisms. 
Even though these species haven't been exposed to light in millions of years, they continue to exist and thrive thanks to gases like methane and ammonium, which they can use to create energy. The World's Oldest Pyramids Whenever you hear about pyramids, your mind most likely races off to reference Egypt. Hey, we've all been there. The Pyramids of Giza are the most popular pyramids in the world, showing a massive ingenuity and creativity on their own. However, what if I told you that the Egyptian pyramids aren't the oldest in the world? Now that title belongs to pyramids that have been discovered in Antarctica. Back in 2016, satellites hovering above the Antarctic region found something rather strange a weird formation that appeared to be peering out of the ice. It appeared that the ice had melted away and this formation was pretty much peeking its little nose out. While the region was difficult to reach, scientists believe that this was the top of a man-made pyramid that was erected hundreds of thousands of years ago at the very least. The fact that there are man-made pyramids in Antarctica tends to lend some credence to the belief that humans actually settled in this area before we knew anything. Some scientists even believe that these pyramids show that there was an entire civilization of humans that lived in this region. However, for now, it is impossible to gather much evidence since that area is pretty much inaccessible. Still though, what are the possibilities that a place so cold and uninhabitable as Antarctica could actually have held a civilization of people? Well, in 2017, a team of geologists from the Alfred Wegener Institute for Polar and Marine Research in Germany went to Antarctica and collected core samples from deep within its frozen sea floor. Their objective was to analyze what the continent's climate might have been like in earlier times, and what they found was quite interesting. Essentially, the geological team is hypothesizing that while Antarctica's climate today might not support much life, it wasn't necessarily always like that. Antarctica has survived a meteorite hit. Meteorites are among the biggest harbingers of extinction in the known universe. Whenever a meteorite hits a planet or a surface, it is pretty much a recipe for catastrophe. Just think back to the dinosaurs. Those animals were probably living on their own in their own prehistoric utopia and boom! A meteorite hit and the planet quite literally had to start again. Interestingly, however, it appears that there was an even bigger meteorite hit that took place in Antarctica, one which could predate that of the dinosaurs and which, according to sources, including Joe Rogan himself, could have been much worse. Recently, Joe and YouTuber and independent researcher Jimmy Corsetti, as well as content creator and author Ben Van Kirkwick on his podcast. In it, the three men spoke extensively on ancient humans as well as their ability to survive extinction-level events. As part of this monologue, Joe pulled up an interesting report. Take a look. Over to crater 1.5 kilometers beneath the Antarctica ice crust. <laughs> 482 kilometers okay. in diameter. 482 kilometers yeah. in diameter. Holy shit! The report is actually quite an interesting one. And while the podcast episode doesn't necessarily delve deeply into it, I think it's worth actually understanding what this meteorite was and just how massive it was. According to reports, this meteorite crater was discovered back in 2006 in a joint mission organized by NASA and the German Aerospace Center. The objective of this mission had been to try and measure irregularities in the Earth's gravitational field, which would then show the distribution of mass across the planet as well as changes in the metric over time. Scientists believe that the meteorite that must have caused such a massive crater could definitely have led to a global extinction-level event. The belief is that the collision caused a huge amount of dust to rise into the air, making the entire planet incredibly hostile towards all forms of life. Months of darkness and caustic acid rain must have made the planet uninhabitable, with only a few primordial shellfish surviving the fallout. The shellfish themselves would have gone on to be the ancestors of the dinosaurs, which ended up becoming the dominant species on the planet for the next 200 million years before another meteorite came and cleared them out as well. Antarctica's Forbidden Sector so earlier in the video, I spoke about the fact that Antarctica appears to be a very secluded place. Unless you have a clearly defined objective, gaining access to the continent can be pretty tricky. Even if you did gain access to Antarctica, you wouldn't be able to explore it in its entirety. Tourists, hikers, and more are only given access to a portion of the landmass where they'll be able to engage in their activities and enjoy it. 
several sectors of the continent are closed off, only available to researchers and military personnel. Think of this region as the Area 51 of Antarctica. No one necessarily knows what's going on there, and many believe it could easily be a secretive spot where experiments and other operations have been carried out. According to some sources, some people who have tried to take a sneak peek into this secluded area have been seized and immediately taken inside by guards. No one has been able to say what happens after that, and it's believed that these people were never seen or heard from again. The official line is that this area is closed off because governments are trying to protect biodiversity and possible endangered species living there. However, I won't be so surprised to find out there is something else fishy going on down in this region. It all just seems pretty weird, doesn't it? The Third Man Factor If you're not an explorer or a daredevil, there's a chance you might never have witnessed the phenomenon of the Third Man Factor. However, for many who have explored, especially areas such as Antarctica, this phenomenon seems as real as daylight. The third man factor is a term used to describe the overwhelming urge or presence of someone around you. In most cases, this urge comes when you're in significant distress or facing a lot of danger. You can feel the specter of someone walking with you or guiding you, even though they're not actually there. Due to Antarctica's unusual periods of light and darkness, tons of people who have visited the continent have reported that they have felt this urge. Others have even claimed to have felt hallucinations and seen shadows that were cast by nothing while traversing the region's infinite plains. One notable experience came in the early 1900s. Sir Ernest Shackleton, a famous British explorer, led an expedition to Antarctica. This expedition was looking to attempt the first land crossing of the Antarctic continent, and it ran from August 1914 to January 1970. According to Shackleton's tale, he and his two companions were trying to travel by boat to South Georgia Island. They eventually decided to stop and search for some food and shelter. But while they were trekking, the companions suddenly felt the presence of someone else walking with them. The group walked for 36 hours over mountains and glaciers, all the while believing that they were actually four people. Since then, tons of other people who have felt lost or stranded while exploring Antarctica have reported the same phenomenon. Maybe it has something to do with the desperation of the situation, or maybe it just might be related to the environment surrounding Antarctica itself. The Blood Falls Quite a lot of creepy things have been discovered in Antarctica over the past few years, and as far as weirdness goes, this one definitely ranks high on the list. Located on the continent's McMurdo Dry Valleys, you have Blood Falls, a stretch of water that unsurprisingly got its name because of its unique color. The falls extend over a backdrop of white snow and glaciers, making for a pretty fascinating look. Blood Falls is five stories high, pouring out from a glacier into a lake. The waterfall runs continuously as well, with red water gushing out of the glacier like an open wound. Blood Falls was first discovered in 1911 by Thomas Griffith Taylor, a geologist who had led several expeditions to Antarctica. The glacier from which the waterfall comes out was eventually named after Taylor to honor him and his discovery. For a long time, scientists were unclear as to why this waterfall had its unique color. When he initially discovered it, Taylor believed that the water had gotten its red color due to algae discoloring it. However, scientists later found out that Blood Falls was once a very salty lake that had now been cut off from the atmosphere due to the formation of ice. Due to this cutoff, the water has seen an increase in salt content, which has also prevented it from freezing even in the harshest of weather. And besides this, the water has a very high content of iron, which gives it its color. And the water also doesn't get any access to oxygen or sunlight, so it has an even darker hue. UFO Sightings Remember when Sam Tripoli told Joe Rogan that the commander on Operation High Jump might have made contact with alien life while on an expedition to Antarctica? I bet you thought he was just some crackpot conspiracy theorist who didn't know anything. Well, what if I told you that a lot of people have actually made UFO sightings in this region? Back in October 2020, someone was scanning satellite imagery of Antarctica when they came across an interesting discovery. They immediately shared it with author Brad Olson, and he was quite shocked to come upon the same thing. A metallic-looking object half-covered in ice appeared to have been peeking out of the land surface, and it looked suspiciously like an alien spacecraft. 
Orson believes that an alien spacecraft must have been left there thousands of years ago, only to be covered up by the immense layers of ice in the region. However, why would it be that an alien civilization visiting the Earth would choose Antarctica of all places to settle? Well, according to experts, the fact that Antarctica has grown to be such a cold, uninhabitable place for humans doesn't necessarily mean that other life forms won't be able to thrive there. It is possible that an alien race looking to visit our planet would feel more comfortable in a place like Antarctica than they would feel elsewhere. Hey, maybe the next time the aliens come to play on Earth, we can set up an Airbnb on Antarctica or something for them to relax and refresh before they hop into their flying saucer and head back home. Just one thing, aliens, please don't kidnap anyone again, all right. Singing Ice Telling you that there's ice in Antarctica is a bit like telling you that the sun is hot, it's pretty obvious. But there's something quite interesting about the ice in this region, some of it actually gives off sound. When some researchers set out to explore the ice shifts in Antarctica, they were pleasantly surprised to come across a glacier that gives off melodic sounds. The Ross Ice Shelf, as it was named, appears to have a thing for giving off sounds and making music. The Ross Ice Shelf is the largest of its kind in Antarctica, with a size that rivals all of France. When winds blow across its dunes and crash against its surface, this collision creates vibrations that produce continuous seismic tones. This means that the shelf pretty much sings at all times. However, the sounds aren't audible to human ears. Scientists had to use seismic sensors to listen to them, to listen to its tunes. Another interesting fact is that the sounds appear to change as the weather changes too. So scientists now use the sounds as well as changes in the sounds to measure the ice shelf's stability and vulnerability to climatic conditions. I feel like we could send that file to a composer or a producer and they could create a fire beat with it. Hey Dr. Dre, give me a call. It's pretty fascinating to think that there is an expanse of land on our planet that hasn't yet been fully explored. Antarctica is the coldest region on Earth, with an estimated 90% of the world's ice. And with the continent being incredibly secluded, it's pretty obvious that we're just scratching the surface when it comes to things that can be found in this place. What do you think about these discoveries? Did aliens really land on this continent? Are there secret government experiments being carried out there? Let us know in the comments below.